Hey, what's cooking? You bunch of... Uh, I got... I gotta go pick up my carnage. I gotta get the dipole for the the doublet, the cobra all coiled up. Took the cobra down. She is no more. Um, got a 30-meter uh, vertical dipole up. So uh, this is it. Uh, it's attached. It's hung on this block here on the bottom. And uh, it goes up, 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 up. And there's the feed point. And then it goes up to the top up there. Uh, it's actually 20, uh, exactly 23 feet per leg, uh, fed with RG8X Direct. And I put a, uh, who's in there? Who's in the chat? Ed, hey, what's going on, Ed? I'm outside jerking around. And uh, uh, made a little T uh, thing for the vertical dipole at the feed point and put an SO239 in. I don't, I don't know if I can zoom. Can I zoom this thing? I can zoom it. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. Put a little strain relief on it. And uh, you want the coax on a vertical dipole, you want it away from the trivin elements, uh, the elements you want it as perpendicular as, as you can get it, and that's about as good as I can get it. Uh, so the coax comes down and it's hooked to the, hooked to the house right there. Um, but, yep, that's it. About 46 feet. Loads up uh, perfect. Perfectly flat. On, what is it, 10, 10, 136. 10 point, what is it, 136 or 138? I can't remember. For uh, 30 meters. So I'm going to do some whisper runs tonight. Uh, overnight. And I just worked a guy in... Uh, um, Illinois on five watts, so that was cool. So it's working, and uh, I don't know. It's a little too close to the house, you know, because the house is like right here. So I don't, I don't know if it's going to work with crap. But it's here, good. I'm decoding all of Europe. I've got uh, Middle East coming in on 30 meters, no problem. So um, we'll see. It's actually connected to the. Uh, there's a 20 meter array over there, and it's connected to one of the uh, support lines. Just put a loop in the support line up there, and and away we go. So uh, we've got some carnage on the property. <laughs> the freaking wind has tore everything up. Uh, so uh, there's the coat. She's uh, taking the folded counterpoise down. Uh, that's on the ground, so I got to pull that apart, tear it all down. I got to remove the one to one here. Get rid of that. And uh, 160, eh, not really. Hey, Paul, what's going on, Zach? Catch you when you get back to work. Uh, at, some, at some point, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to move the... Uh, the 40 meter array there's one feed point right there and i've gone over this before with you guys there's the other one uh, right there and northeast is right there it's not up that high and i got some real that tree is over 100 feet tall so i'd like to get new lines up over these trees um this tree right here uh the line is only i don't know 45 feet I could probably get in the top of that tree which is about six oh yeah 60 feet probably um, if I could get that up 60 feet uh, that would really be good I'm gonna have to run a line over to that tree though to do it because this tree I don't think is I don't know if I can see the problem is this tree is too close because the spacing of the elements so I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have to go to that tree back there and then these poplars, that's, that's a piece of cake, I think. Uh, those are about 100 feet and change. So, I don't know. I got to figure something out. I may have to put a line over the tree way up back there uh, just to get enough tension on it. But, yeah, man. Uh, that's it. Real short and quick. Anyways, I got to go back to work. Uh, we'll catch you guys later.
this uh, Cobra. I got to get it all coiled up, buttoned up, and put back in, and then pick up my mess because I got a big, got a big cluster here. Uh, and then start the yard work. Yay! Still in uh, pretty much winter, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, hey, Dan. Uh, how's it going, man? Hope you guys are okay. Hope everybody's doing well. I figured I'd do a quick check-in. I may do a, uh, may play Apocalypse on Zombie later on on FTA and see where I get to on 30 tonight. So I may be back. We'll see. I uh, just want to stay connected with you guys. And I know everybody's very busy on YouTube and uh, it'd be nice. Baker Peak. Baker Peak right there. And that is the Appalachian Range right there. It's approximately 3,000 feet. Uh, so, uh, we oh, I'll walk out front. I never showed you guys this. Um, this has been pretty, pretty flipping cool so far. Uh, works really good. Oh. I got to get, this is the control line. I mean, this is a typical ham radio's yard, isn't it? I mean, look at this freaking mess. Uh, I got a control line and the RG8, which runs all the way over there. That's for the switch box, the relay for the 75 meter array. And there is the 75 meter uh, reversible Moxon. Uh, runs... Boy, I can't really see it. Why? Huh. I don't know if you can see it, but it runs about uh, southwest corners there. And the southeast corner is there. And it comes across. And it's basically what it is, is it's two, instead of a Moxon, uh, there's one feed point. Uh, northeast feed point, southwest feed point, and what it what it is is basically, if you're a picture of a traditional Moxon rectangle, right? Um, instead of having a reflector on this back side right here, you basically create two driven elements. You shorten the reflector to match. The driven, the primary driven element, and I know it's, on, it's defocusing because of my uh, fat finger. But and you maintain uh, tip spacing, which is, which is the same, which is right, right in there somewhere. And that's about 22 inches. And because of the pet capacitive coupling on the antenna, it, it's it behaves a little odd. It's not like a set of dipoles. They are. I feed them direct 50 ohms, but. Uh, I've got, um, I think about 90, I don't know, 98, 99 feet of RG8X um, feed lines, which go over to the relay, which is right there, the relay box. And then I have a delay line in place, which is, I think it's about 38, 39 feet long. Um, and that gives me about 15 dB front to back. Uh, it is, Initial testing has been very, very good. It's around uh, 6 to 12 dB increase in signal strength over the Cobra, which is a linear loaded doublet. And uh, between... Uh, that's uh, 6 to 12 dB increase on receive. On, on me receiving the signals. My receive is 6 to 12 dB, on average 10 to 12 dB increase of signal strength on receiving stations. Uh, most of the time I can't even hear them on the Cobra. And uh, 10 to 15 dB front to back. Um, so it's, got, it's an okay back door. It's not really uh, ferocious. Um, forward drive is approximately 15 dB 
uh, increase in single strength um, and forward drive. So that's that's about you know eh, two S units increase in forward drive over a linear loaded doublet. So that's that's pretty significant. So it's working well. Is it textbook? No, unfortunately, it's not textbook. So we'll go with it. I just don't. There's not a lot of information on how to properly load these things, and I'm not that good with the math. <laughs> Anyways, ciao. We'll see you guys later. K1 GMM, Steve in the canyons on a fairly nice day. Temperature's probably in the low 50s. It's pretty nice, man. We'll catch you later. Oh, I should.